Good morning, everybody. It's Tom Christie back in the painting studio. And today's video is going to focus on a simple paint job for a hen canvas back cork magnum gunner. I've already done the carving on this. The carving was very similar to the Magnum Drake canvas back cork body decoy videos that I've done before. So you might want to refer to those if you're looking uh, for how to carve a canvas back. But I've made this hen and I went ahead and base coated it. I've combed it just like the uh, Drake canvas back. So again, refer to those videos if you need to see how to base coat and comb the decoy. And in this video, we'll focus on then applying the colors, blocking in the colors to make this hen canvas back gunner come alive. Hey, if you're enjoying the content that I'm putting together on my YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button. It doesn't cost anything uh, to subscribe. That helps me out. Uh, it also will put you on the list for any future videos that I do and content that I add that you'll get notification of that. So I would appreciate that. And let's get going on this hen canvas back. Welcome back. First thing I want to do is use my chalk pencil. It's just a white charcoal pencil. You can get it Dick Blick's or Jerry's Artorama, art supply stores, and do the layout work, kind of defining where the different uh, base colors are going to reside. Same back here. I want these, this speculum showing up back here. Very classical position for a canvas back and then there's a little bit of vermiculation down here where the side pocket wraps under and you can see I haven't undercut much there because this is a gunning decoy I want stability as opposed to pinpoint accuracy on anatomy so I make a few adjustments for a gunning decoy in that regard so I'll pencil these in and then we'll get started on laying in the base colors I'm going to start with a base coat on the body, the vermiculation area, with uh, Nimbus Gray. This is Josanya Nimbus Gray, and it's just kind of a neutral gray, light gray value that we'll use to paint the back and the side pocket area. And that'll take a couple of coats to cover. But you want to make sure you get down in all of these uh, vermiculation uh, combing areas so that there's good paint coverage throughout. Now while that base coat paint is still wet, I'm using a little burnt umber and putting it on the same brush that I had the Nimbus Gray. And now I'm going to use that to darken the tertials back here a little bit and fade that, blend it as you go forward. And I wanna do the same thing. I wanna darken the shoulder area here just a little bit, not, not a huge contrast, but enough that you can tell there's a difference there. And I'm kind of blending that out as I go up and over the shoulder area. This is all just wet on wet using a big angle brush. And you can do this pretty quickly. I'll do that on both sides and give you a shot at the tertial area there. So you can see it's a little bit darker as you head toward the back of the bird. We're going to highlight the vermiculation that's on top of this through the combing and dry brushing that later, and that'll add some additional detail, but this kind of gives a good under coating. And again, just darkening that area on top of the side pocket. And you can see while the paint is still wet, 
it gives you the opportunity to do that wet on wet blending. If you let this dry, it's more difficult, particularly with acrylics. Oils are a lot more forgiving in terms of blending because they stay wet longer. Acrylics, you have to work pretty quickly. So I'll keep working on this and get this value where I want it because generally the, the feathers of the back are going to be a slightly darker than those side pockets. Let's give you another view of that blended area on the back. And now I'm going to come back in with a little of the uh, Nimbus Gray and clean up the side pocket where I've messed a few areas up there. Just clean that up quickly before we move on. Just washed out my brush. I'm going back over this top area. Make sure there's a clean line there and clean up any any areas where the blending kind of slapped over onto the side pocket. Just a quick shot of that. You can see going back over that side pocket, I want to define that line, make it nice and clean before we move on. Now for the base breast color mix, I've got Josanya Burnt Umber, Raw Sienna, and Raw Umber and mixing those together on my palette in about equal parts to give this light brown, but not too light. We'll paint that on the breast. So I'll get that painted, and then we'll move to the rump. It's a quick look at the breast after two coats. And you can see I'm not working to put any details in right now, just getting base colors blocked. There's a view from the top. This rump area tends to be a little bit lighter overall than the breast. Um, so especially on a gunning decoy, we're going kind of for mid-range values because you don't have a lot of details to convey uh, things. You want to keep it simple. So this color value is slightly lighter. And to get that, I've added just a touch of white gesso to that breast mix. And it just tones this down and grays it up slightly. So I'll paint that in. Just another quick note, I'm going to wrap that rump color around the tail. I've left the tail, the oak tail, pretty thick here for strength. Uh, but from a distance, by painting this the same color as the rump, this area will kind of blend in. And when we paint the tail feathers on top, a little lighter value, they're going to show up a little bit more from a distance. And this, that way you don't see this big wide stripe. If it's painted light, the tail starts to look real blocky from a distance. Okay, for the tail, I'm using a combination of Nimbus Gray and Burnt Umber to come up with this darker gray, brown gray value. And again, I'm just using a big brush to load that on. Especially on gunning decoys, I like to keep the paint pretty thick. Um, just helps make it a little more durable. I'm going to use that same tail mix to block in the primaries. And I've got a, a little bit of a smaller, more of a detailed brush to work in this area. And we'll come back and put a few highlights on these to separate them from the rump area later. The cork is a little challenging to paint over and that's another reason you want to keep the paint 
relatively thick. It tends to fill in voids as you go. Now I'm just going to use some straight Nimbus Gray on a detail brush and do a little bit of an outline of these primary feathers so I don't lose track of where they are. It's pretty subtle differences in color back here, so I'm going to go ahead and mark those in. Like that. I'll do the same on the other side, and then that kind of establishes where those are. It's just a quick shot of those crossed primaries in position. Now I'm just going to use uh, Nimbus Gray again in the detail brush and just come in and put in a few tail feather markings. Just a single line to put some definition back here, but not too much detail. Now I'm using Nimbus Gray with white gesso and then tinted just slightly with carbon black to give it a little cooler uh, value temperature wise. And I'm just blocking in with a detail brush that speculum area. And then we're going to want to darken the speculum a little bit on the trailing edge. So while that is still wet, a little chisel scrubber and add some black, carbon black to that mix. Not, we don't want it to go all black, but just a darker value of gray and keep mixing until you get a color that you feel will work. And then I'm going to take this chisel scrubber on the back edge kind of redefine that edge with the darker value and then blend that out as we go forward. One note about carbon black, it really changes, it darkens as it dries. So go easy with carbon black because it'll surprise you when it dries, it really all of a sudden darkens things up a great deal. So I'm going to work back and forth, trying to get a nice soft blend between this darker rear edge and this lighter value as you go forward. The other thing I'm doing is taking the lighter value on another maybe a half inch chisel brush and just going in the opposite direction, lightening this forward area and blending it into the darker back there. That's getting close. Now I'm taking my detail brush in carbon black and just starting up here and goes down and then thins out as it goes to the front. Just one brush, brush stroke in each area. I'll clean these up just a little bit because of the uh, cork. It's a little bumpy. And then as a final touch, I'm going to add a little bit of a high, uh, a light highlight on the trailing edge. I'm also going to add a little bit of a black edge to this tertial. Not too much, but to kind of clean things off there at the top. Now to finish, I'm taking a little off-white, which is white gesso with a touch of raw umber, just to knock down the brightness a little bit. And I'm just going in here at the 
tail end of each one of these and wrapping it around a little bit to lighten that the way it is on a live bird. While we're working back here and I've got this mix mixed up on the rump color, I'm just going to take a little detail brush and uh, break this line up a little bit so it's just not such a hard line where that lighter area meets the rump. Not trying to get too detailed here, but just put a little bit of structure in that area to break things up. Same on this side. All right, for the head base color, I've got a mix of white gesso with raw sienna and a touch of raw umber. So more raw sienna in this mix to make this kind of tan buff colored head color. I'll go over this a few times and paint the, the entire head with the exception of the bill. We'll come back and darken the, the crown later and maybe do a few cheek highlights. Right now we're just base coating with this buff color. The underside, the chin and the neck is a lighter value. So I've added some white gesso to that head base color mix and I'm gonna lighten the area in the chin here. Kind of blend that out. Make sure you can see this as you go out the side. I'm just doing rough blending with this big brush right now just to get some paint on here. I'm going to stop the lightness about right in that area and then come back and work on the other side. So I'll do that on both sides. And as it wraps around the face, you can just lighten the pressure on the brush and kind of blend into the surrounding color. It was very characteristic of a hen canvas bag to have this light chin and neck in the front. And you can see that from a distance. Now I'm just going back with a, a dampened filbert scrubber and uh, this is just clear water but by scrubbing across this junction between the light and the dark you don't want this too wet so dampen the brush and then dry it off a little bit but i'm blending those colors together to make a softer transition than i could get with the bigger brush Get this position so you can see I'm just scrubbing across there with the clear water it tends to pick up some of the color as you scrub and blend the two colors together and soften the look hopefully you can see that happening on the video now I'm going to use burnt umber and go in with them. I've got a little half inch chisel scrubber. We're going to be pretty dark on the top of the crown and then fade that out. And by fading that out, I'm just lightening the pressure on the brush. I don't have a ton of paint on the brush as you go around the, the side of the head and just kind of feather that into the sur surrounding area. 
just with a real light pressure and creating a, a scrubbed blend there for starters. So I get to the back of the head. I'm not going to take this dark all the way down the back of the neck. So you're going to start fading it out after you get over the top of the crown, kind of to the back of the head. And keep blending back and forth. I'm going to take it down a little farther to get a nice transition between that dark value and the surrounding lighter head color. Now I'm going to use my splayed out filbert again. This is an old brush, so once the bristles tend to fill up, they tend to splay out, and that can be to your favor uh, because it makes it kind of a softer blend. But I've just got pure water on here, and I'm going back and forth over that junction line and beginning to create a softer blend than I can get with just the, the dry brush scrub. And this takes some time. You just have to go back and forth. So I'm going to blend this a little, then go back to this brush with the dark value on it. Keep working back and forth until you get a nice soft transition. Now I'm using a, a little of the face value. Not much paint on this brush at all, but I'm just lightly scrubbing that across to lighten this burnt umber crown somewhat and pick up some of this nice texture in the head. Give it a, a softer look. So I'll keep working that back and forth. But you get the idea. You can spray the head, um, the crown, which is also a good way to do it. Uh, I just wanted to use brushes on this particular decoy. Okay, we're going to call that a wrap of session one, which is kind of getting all the base coat colors on the hen canvas back hunting decoy. In the next session, session two, we'll finish the hen canvas back decoy. I hope this has been valuable and look forward to the next session. Good afternoon, it's Tom Christie back in the painting studio and we're working on a hen canvas back hunting decoy, painting that decoy. So in session one, we got the base colors put on the bird. In this session, session two, we'll finish the hen canvas back decoy. Hey, if you value the content I'm putting together, I really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. It doesn't cost anything. That helps me out a great deal. So let's get busy and let's finish up this canvas back.